Hello, everyone, and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today, we've got a battle of the get your butts up to the late stages of the game as soon as possible civilizations as the Viper playing as the Malayan Blue prepares to take on Sebastian playing as the Khmer or Kamai in red. Now, all the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and, like I said, try to get their butts up to feudal age and onwards ASAP. Why don't we take a look at the Civ matchup we will be watching today? Now, the Malay are a naval civilization that comes with a few late game land features that are incredibly powerful. To start with, their battle elephants become progressively cheaper as the game goes on 30% off in castle, 40% cheaper in imperial. They get all infantry armor upgrades for free, so we'll keep an eye on the top left of our screen as these three boxes, hopefully, if we reach imperial, light up. And their militia line units can be upgraded to cost only food, no gold. So the Malay don't actually get champions. This upgrade, when combined with supplies, essentially turns their two-handed swordsmen into fairly cheap trash units that only cost 65 food. Now, if you want to raid your opponent non-stop with Age of Empires Zerglings, well, then the Malay can turn to their unique unit, the Karambit Warrior. This is an incredibly cheap, super fast, but overall kind of weak infantry unit that only takes up half a population space. So, for example, if you've got 10 of them, you only take up five population room. Now, in order to help you get these late game features, upgrades, powerful units as fast as possible, the Malay do advance to the next age 66% faster than normal, which means you can either uh, rush, rush, rush to the next age, beat your opponent there, or you can, uh, I don't know, maybe put on your pit helmet, go on safari, take a look at a few of these wildlife animals, some goats, some ostriches, zebras, maybe even try to hunt the lion if you, uh, if you so desire, and then... When you're ready, go up to the next stage pretty damn quickly. Now, speaking of going up to the next stage pretty damn quickly, like I mentioned in the intro, we've got two very lightning fast upping civilizations. We've got the Khmer, the Khmer in red, a civilization that focuses on some of the heaviest hitting units in the game. Their scorpions come with extra range and can be upgraded to shoot a second bolt. Their battle elephants move 10% faster and can also be upgraded to hit even harder with a plus three attack boost. And their unique unit is quite possibly one of the most annoying unique units to deal with head on. I am, of course, referring to the Ballista Elephant, which, as it sounds, is an elephant unit with a big old ballista mounted on its back that, much like the Scorpion, can be upgraded to shoot a second bolt. Now, in order to take advantage of these bonuses, upgrades, and ridiculously powerful units, the Khmer have to get up to Castle and Imperial Age ASAP with a lot of food in the bank. So to help them do this, they do come with a few nifty bonuses. To start with, they don't need any structures to go up to the next stage, meaning as long as Sebastian's got 500 food, he can go up to feudal. As long as he's got 800 food, 200 gold, he can go up to castle. He does not need any structures whatsoever, which is why you'll see at the top of your screen underneath his Roman numeral one is just a progress bar, whereas the Viper has the two little houses indicating that he does need the mill and the lumber camp to go up. Now, second, all buildings from an age are available to you at all times, which means you don't need a barracks to build a stable. Or once you hit castle, if you want to plop down a siege workshop, you don't need a blacksmith. There is no such thing as a prerequisite for the Khmer. Lastly, their farmers don't need to bring food to a mill or a town center. As long as a farmer is actually just working on a farm, it adds unit by unit food to the stockpile. So the Khmer, the Khmer could literally put a farm right here, protected from literally everything. And the farmer working on that farm will just basically add one unit of food up, 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 up until that farm needs to be reseeded. Now, lastly, Khmer villagers can be harder to raid because they can actually garrison inside houses. And once the danger is passed, they can come back out and get back to work. Although, big caveat with that, they do not regenerate HP like they would, uh, for example, if they garrisoned inside a castle. So, a cute little feature but one that has to be taken always with a grain of salt with a uh, with an asterisk near it because if your villagers at 1 HP, 2 HP, 5 HP, it's going to stay that way as long as they're in that house and then they pop out, might get killed. Who knows? We'll see if we get to see that cool feature in play. Both players are now heading up to the next age, our Malay. About 20 seconds behind his opponent. Let's take a look at our bases because the Viper has gone up with three extra villagers Sebastian up with only 18. He knows he's got to be a little bit quicker on his feet if he wants to beat the Malay up to the next stage. And let's take a look. Speaking of Malay, we've got primary gold off to the side. Not terrible. Primary stone and additional gold. All three very exposed to the front. That is yuckety yuck. 
An additional stone to the back. What about the forest placement? Uh, not the greatest, not the worst. I'm going to zoom out so we can see the attack path is kind of a diagonal. And so the Viper's, I want to call it a forward position, is pretty much open, which is why you see he is already starting to create a wall off. He's already halfway there. But three forests do, does uh, give him enough wood in case one of these comes under attack. And Sebastian, by the way, now sees everything. The Viper scout is so busy chasing Sebastian that he has no clue what the hell is going on in the Kamai base. As, by the way, don't we? So let's take a look at that base. We've got a stable. By the way, there's a stable. Do you see a barracks anywhere? Nope. That is the cool feature of the Kamai. They do not need prerequisites. Primary gold very exposed to the front. And by the way, what a front it is. This is completely open. Primary stone off the beaten path here to the top. Where are your additional resources? Extra stone off to the south, extra gold to the front, and at least he's got a little bit of patch, a little bit of patch, a little patch of gold here to the back. And it looks like Sebastian is already starting to wall off the rear of his base uh, using that gold. For now, not terrible, but once you start mining that gold, obviously that becomes a liability if there's any kind of ranged units that pop out. And the Malay, by the way, have... Uh, not terrible ranged units. They're foot archers. I think I mentioned this in the game between Huang and Survivalist a few days ago when we saw a Malay versus Malay absolute banger of a game. Their foot archers are pretty much perfect. Uh, they're lacking mostly in mounted uh, cav archer. I don't think they have heavy cav archer, and I don't think they have hand cannoneers, but when it comes to, you know, your usual arbalest, etc., it pretty much comes with every upgrade available. Uh, blacksmith, university, archery range, etc. And again, that is just for the foot archers. Sebastian, by the way, has the Viper still, he still hasn't seen his opponent's base. Oh my goodness. 12 minutes into the game, Sebastian is the one pushing in here for scouts. Why are you going after the house? He agrees. He wants to go after a weaker palisade, maybe catch a villager or two here. But, okay, realizes that <laughs> the Viper is walled off and he is not going to beat the Viper's uh, very impressive quick wall off skills so he just retreats I'm not too sure why he's retreating was the viper really pressing him that hard at home i guess sebastian's base is completely open for now and so if you know that your opponent if he caught wind of these scouts here that are roaming around the map maybe he got a little nervous he said okay you know what the viper's walled in without ranged units there's not really much that i can do against that wall off and so i'm completely open i might want to head back but Boom, boom, down go two of the Viper Scouts, and Sebastian draws first blood at the 13-minute mark of the game. But the Viper now knows. The Viper now sees exactly where his opponent is. So we'll see how much of an issue he decides to make. I see more and more blue dots streaming across the map. It is a Spearman and a Scout. Another Spearman has already made his way here. So this is going to add a little bit more danger to this army. Sebastian's either going to have to add a few archer. Does he have an archery range? No, he <laughs> immediately places one down. Might have to add a few skirmishers here and there to try to get rid of this spearman, or just might want to go pure numbers alone. He is going up to 10 scouts, and uh, 10 scouts versus one spearman should do a pretty damn good job of killing that spearman, especially if he's isolated on his own. But now there's two, and yeah, that, it's funny in Feudal Age how such small quantities, it's like monks in Castle Age. One monk can be enough to stop an attack of five, six, seven, eight knights. Whereas in Feudal Age, two spearmen is usually enough to stop an attack of maybe 10 scouts. Oh, by the way, one thing I didn't notice now that I'm highlighting, no wonder Sebastian is being so scared to take a fight here. Or I shouldn't say scared, hesitant. Look at the HP on these scouts. Yikes. So he did manage to kill two of the Viper scouts down here. And we see their bodies still decomposing under the hot Arabian sun, but did cost them a, a lot of HP. Whereas the Viper Scouts are pretty much, I mean, five Scouts have more HP than six, which tells you how damaged these uh, Red Scouts are. And Sebastian tries, he senses an opportunity, one isolated Spearman. I'm surprised the Viper just kind of parked the Spearman here. The second one is still moving. Now is a good time to get this guy. There's no one here. But again, you never know if the Viper is going to realize, hey, there's a few weaker ones. And I believe the Spearman with the bonus damage does 3 plus 15, 18 attack. And these guys have no armor whatsoever. So are there any of them here that actually have less than 18 HP? Yeah, there's one with five. Oh, never mind. Where is he? Oh, he's hanging back. He's here. Okay, there's two really weak ones here hanging back. Oh, look at that. Look at that, Sebastian isolates the Viper Spearman and guns him from behind. Fantastic. Three kills to none at the moment. 
Ooh, I don't know if one villager is going to be enough to stop this against five scouts. Let's see it. As a vulture screeches overhead, oh, Sebastian agrees, decides to forget the gate, and plops down two houses instead. And is he completely walled off now? Yeah. Our Kamai in red is completely walled off. And there's not a damn thing the Viper is going to be able to do about it. Not with pure melee units. But does he carry 20 seconds away from Castle Age? We saw the stable. Now we see the blacksmith. Man, some of these uh, architecture styles are pretty difficult for me to, to discern the differences. Our Malay is in Castle Age. Town Center 2. Town Center 3 being plopped. I like this location. Very forward. Gets the stone. This one is not bad either. Trying to think if there's any other better locations, in my opinion. I don't know if this is a elevation or not. Sometimes the uh, shifting sands of Arabia are uh, hard to... Uh, I, I don't know why I'm going down a rabbit hole of what uh, why things are so hard for me to see elevations and, and architecture styles. I think those are pretty... Uh, bottom line, I think those are pretty damn good locations for town centers. In 30 seconds, Sebastian will also be in Castle Age. The villager lead has now been narrowed to one. And he has the army supply lead. But again, the army supply lead with some very weak scouts. You are not Georgian scouts. Now there's three of them that are weak as shit. I guess the third one after killing that one spearman here retreated. Yeah, you're not Georgian. You're not regenerating HP anymore. And so you have to be very, very careful. They are going to go up to Light Cav. Bosa, is he going to put down a monastery? No, he doesn't have the wood for it. Viper, in the meantime, getting husbandry, making his cavalry lightning quick. Also upgrading his farms with heavy plow. Where's Sebastian? As we saw, Bosal light cavalry. A fight ensues here in the front of the Viper, uh, front of Sebastian's base. And the light cavalry. All right, Sebastian with the timely upgrade takes out another scout. So the kill lead is now four to zero. And he's going cav archer. <clears throat> um. Okay, the Viper with a fourth town center, having taken a bit of stone here from this pile, from this quarry, is going up to four town centers. Are we gonna see some kind of massive elephant push out of him? That's a lot of a uh, lot of villagers and a lot of potential resources. A fifth kill, by the way, another spearman. But for all the kills, five to nothing. It really is just some dark age and some feudal age units. And now Sebastian discovers not one, but two of the town centers. Will he get a villager? Will he get a villager? No, no ballistics. No upgrades whatsoever, except for the plus one attack and range. The Viper's cavalry are still just scouts, which tells me he has zero interest in upgrading them yet. He probably would have by now. Sebastian with a very aggressive forward siege workshop. And another kill for our Khmer, who... Is almost done his second town center. The Viper, by the way, finished his three town centers before Sebastian even reached Castle Age. Sebastian now also getting husbandry, adding Bodkin. So these... Yeah, what? <laughs> what the hell was that? That must have been an accident. Uh, misclick. So these Cav Archers are going to have uh, pretty good range and pretty good attack. Where do you think you're going? Oh, <laughs> hero villager. Hero villager. Thinks he's uh, strong enough. Bench pressed a little this morning, got a bit of a pump on, got roided up and thought he could take on some Cav Archers. He was proven very wrong, dead wrong, in fact, as another villager dies. Another one escapes with a massive 3 HP. Now, I can't be too upset about seeing Khmer Cav Archers. As I mentioned, they, they tend to focus on some of the heaviest hitting. You know, you got your Ballist Elephants, you got your ridiculous Tusk Sword plus three elephants that move faster as well. But I think in terms of cav archers, they also, like the foot archers of the Malay, their cav archers are pretty much perfect. I think that, ooh, <laughs> fantastic castle. Ooh, maybe not. Maybe should have placed it here. Although I guess you can't really place that there with these uh, cav archers circling. So a very, very safe, very secure, very uh, Viper-esque castle location, if I can put it like that. What are the Khmer missing? I feel like they're missing an upgrade for these Cav Archers. Is it Thumbring or Parthian Tactics? It's one of those. I think it's it's it might be Parthian Tactics. In any event, we'll see. I I'm I always love to see Cav Archers, and we'll see whether or not he's as mobile as he needs to be with them. What's happening here? 
A few of them to the back are attacking a house. Yeah, they're attacking a house, but that house has nine pierce armor, so you can attack it all the live long day. And look at this, the Viper. Assuming that his opponent is going to bust into his base as creating a secondary wall off already. He doesn't want to deal with any kind of headache, so he's going to build this and then go back to farming. Is he abandoning this town center? He's going Karambits? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't mind that at all. Monks move forward. Their nine range will definitely beat the six of the Cav Archer. But like I said, it's funny how this one little unit is generally enough to zone out armies that are five, six, ten times bigger. Just by virtue of its ability to, uh, as Survivalist says, mind control the unit. What are you? Okay. Our Malay is added in a knight. And now his Karambits are moving out. He's got a group of 10 of them. So remember, these count as five population, not 10. Red has uh, any idea of this? He's seen the castle. I love how mobile Red is being, by the way. His Cav Archers are here to the center. They're here to the... They're moving to the right. The Monk is moving to the right as well. A few Karambits try to get some of the siege. They fail miserably. This is not a unit that sh you should be uh, using to fight your opponent one-on-one. -on -one. You need to uh, outnumber your opponent significantly if you want to make good use of this unit. Will they get another villager? Nope, they're going after the farm right as the Viper penetrates the nether regions of the Kamai base. What are the upgrades on these? Look at the stats. They're just absolutely terrible. Seven base attack. It's basically as strong as an archer unit. 30 HP, as much HP as an archer unit, but this is how you play them. This is where you want them to outnumber your opponent five to one, but now a full town center. Well, not full, half full and some light cab. Should be more than enough to clear up this incursion as there's now another scuffle. Ah, oh, <laughs> looks like they got a mangonel. Maybe two. I don't know what that piece of wood is. I suspect the mangonel. Maybe a scorpion, but then they all die. Another town center. Ooh, 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 hello. Viper garrisons. Looks like he did manage to convert one of the cav archers of his opponent. Now, karambits are super duper cheap. They cost 15 gold, 25 food. But if you throw enough of them at siege, so I, I, the point I'm trying to make is the trade out versus siege is very situational. If you throw five Karambits at a Mangonel and you get it, by the way, beautiful double takedown by Sebastian. Great micro out of him. And now he's being, I, I said this a second ago, he's being so mobile with these Cav Archers. He is playing them perfectly. But anyway, back to the main point I was making before I interrupted myself, interrupting myself. If you throw five of them at a Mangonel and you get it, that's great. If you throw 15 of them at a Mangonel, that's probably not worth it. Ooh, okay, okay. Our Khmer is pulling how many villagers? 14 villagers. A baker's dozen plus one move forward. They want to get this castle up. He loses another. Would have been 15, I guess. 31 kills on these Cav Archers, but I guess the numbers are always a little bit uh, misleading, especially when you're one-shotting these super weak units. And again, you got one Cav Archer, but it cost you six or seven Karambits. I don't know that that necessarily works out to the Viper's favor, but holy moly, the Viper wants his castle to go up first. 23 villagers, plus a few that are, have been killed, but he, is it worth it? Is it? He got his castle up. Is this red castle going to go up? 97, 98, 99, it does go up. Villagers go inside. Might as well put the Cav Archers inside. Knight, confused, doesn't know what he's doing. What is this castle firing on? What is happening here? What is this castle? I think the red castle was firing on the town center, and it kind of looked like the blue castle was firing on its own town center. A monk and a converted Cav Archer walk into a bar, and then a whole bunch of villagers die. Okay, Sebastian realizes I can attack this guy all the live long day. As long as the monk's alive, he's just going to keep healing him. There are a few rams. How many? Two behind here are very hard to see with the... Uh, the theme of today is hard to see things. Things that are hard to see. Will he get a villager before he dies? No, he does not. So, all the action. Back right in front of the viper's base. Right in his face. Second castle going up for our Kamai to the side. Not exactly the synchronized attack that I like to see, but the castle should pretty much fall. 
why is red not attacking karambits right now there's a bit of a missed opportunity to get like 15 or 20 karambits as they were attacking that castle and now all of a sudden that little swarm is here they're at a plus two plus two Sebastian is heading up to Imperial. He is two minutes away, but that doesn't matter. The Viper can still beat him. If he clicks up in the next five or ten seconds, the Viper will get ahead first. And oh, <laughs> this just shows you how weak these units are. A wall stops them. The Cav Archers just are gunning them down left, right, and center. This is why you need mass. Another, a third castle for our Malay, who is now going up to the next stage 30 seconds behind his opponent. Even though he clicked up uh, over a minute behind, he's only 30 seconds behind. The way it works for the Malay is it takes them just a third less time to go up to the next stage. So instead of uh, the 190 seconds that Sebastian has to wait, the Viper only has to wait 115 or 114. Just under two minutes versus just over three minutes. And now the Karambits are clearing the way. I wonder if we're going to get to see Elite Karambits. Something we didn't really get to see in the Survivalist Huang game, a fully upgraded, maxed out Karambit, is on the whole, not terrible for what it is. It's not a bad unit, since you can mass a hundred of them for 1500 gold. Oop, blocking the construction site are these dummies. Hello, dummies. Hello. The Viper, a fourth castle. He'll be in Imperial soon as a Treb gonna pop out. I love that he's built this little area of security for himself. I hope the Treb, for his sake, pops out over here. The Karambits catch a few Cav Archers out of position. Two, three Karambits for two Cav Archers is a pretty good trade. We're getting Masonry as well for the Viper. He wants his buildings to be thick and juicy. As the Karambits just continue pivoting, pivoting, pivoting. But the Viper's going up to four castles. And these units are trained, I believe, in six seconds. Oh, with conscription a lot quicker than that. Elite Karambits and Blast Furnace. Remember, the Malay get the armor upgrades for free, so the Viper didn't have to spend a cent, didn't have to wait a second to get that. As now the Karambits are going to run amok. The Viper has 700 gold. You do the math. What's 700 divided by 15? That is a lot of Karambits. And now they're elite. Now they've got conscription. In a minute, they're going to have Blast Furnace. But the Cav Archers are going to have chemistry. So they're going to attack on a 10. What are the stats on the elite Karam? And look at those stats. Like I said, with Blast Furnace, they attack on a 12. Which for infantry is terrible. And amazing, by the way, wall off here by Sebastian. Amazing wall off to save those Trebs. Because these 11, these 12 Karamits would have definitely gotten one, if not more, of those Trebuchets. But the stats are not super terrible. 12 attack. 5 pierce armor against the 10 of a cav archer. 10 attack of a cav archer. And the viper is going up to 72 karambits. Oh no. Oh no. They're to the back. They're here. Okay. He's trying to get some vision here up north. There's another body of them. 34 of them. Actually, wait a second. My, my clicking skills are shit. As we all know, it's 53 of them. Sebastian's at 102 villagers. The Viper's at 133. I ideally <laughs> like to see that reverse. If you're training cheap Karambits, you really only need 100 villagers or so. Especially, if, imagine if you had 100 villagers and you had 100 population space military for Karambits. You could train 200 Karambits. Oh no! Oh no, he doesn't get the wall up. But does he really need it? Their HP, I believe, when their elite jumps from 30 to 40, right? Yeah, 30 to 40. So I don't think he really needed that. I Maybe I overreacted there, but look at Sebastian's base all of a sudden. He just lost 22, 24, 25, 26, 30 villagers in the blink of a freaking eye. Dead. Dead. Oh my goodness, dead. The Viper just opens the floodgates and outpour a whole bunch of blue karam. It's 91 of them. <laughs> there you go. Well, there you go. What the hell can he do here? He's He's got so many, he overshot the mark. You know, well, what's the expression? Aim aim for the stars, land on the moon. Aim for the moon, land on the stars. Some some Something about that. Over aim, basically, so that even if you fall short, you'll reach a pretty good goal. But holy moly, the last few minutes of this game just erupted. And <laughs> look at how quickly they killed villagers. He was at 102, wasn't he? He's, he lost half his villager population. 
in uh, in like a minute, a minute and a half, two minutes. Wow, Sebastian thought that he was going to be fighting an army head on. That's why his entire army, 33 army supply, 25 of it is here, which means only eight of it is somewhere here. The rest of it, or the rest of the Viper's army, he's got 42. So there's 48 Karambits somewhere here. 34. I guess there's more kind of flowing in. Eh, take my math with a grain of salt. But what an absolute crazy turn of events. Just like that, in the blink of an eye, I would snap my fingers. But that would be a very annoying sound. Imagine when I say just like that. Imagine a finger snap in your mind. And just like that, the Karamets absolutely overrun the Kamai base and just go absolutely ape shit. I mean, look at this. Dead villagers. Cav Archer down. Oh, b a literal bloodbath here underneath. You think this was an Aztec temple? How much blood there is underneath there. More villagers decaying into the sand. A few Karamets died. Of course, the town center still 15 kills is not bad at all. And remember, 15 kills is uh, what's that? What's 15 times 15? 225 gold. That's a, a waste of gold. Viper's got 19, uh, not waste, like, uh, oh my goodness, what am I trying to say? You just throw it out. It's like uh, lighting a uh, $5 bill on fire. You don't need it. The Viper says with 19 villagers on gold. And by the way, total map control. Look at the map. This is the Viper's vision. He sees everything. He's mining out the gold here, which he still has three patches. He still has three patches here. He's building a preemptive castle. He's got a bunch of stone. I mean, the Viper is in an absolute fantastic situation. Despite his opponent building the more mobile map pace controlling unit, Sebastian, in the beginning, in the middle of the game, was using these cav archers fantastically. He was up here with them. He was down here with them. He went and moved over here. Got a whole bunch of villager kills. How many kills on that at the end of the day? 67 kills is not bad. Uh, unless it's only six of them being villagers. Now, do I think the Viper went a little bit overkill on the villager count? Probably. <laughs> I think 133 may not uh, be necessary. But he was nowhere close to supply cap. So I don't think he really cared but what an absolute insane, in the blink of an eye, snap your fingers Thanos style, and all of a sudden half your villager population disappears. And call these, I guess, the Infinity Karambits, as they just absolutely got, let's see how many uh, villager kills they got. 33, 26 villager kills. All in the last minute or so. If uh, maybe a minute or two minutes. Doesn't really matter. We literally just looked up and it was it, this 57 was 102 and now it's at a 57. 321 Karambits. 68 Cav Archers. PKPM, middle of the game. PKPM, uh, beginning of the game, about 13 minutes before that. Let's take a look at the economies. Uh, wow. So the Viper with a 30 villager lead at the peak. And look, there you go. So here it, it literally was 40 minutes, 30 seconds. And this is for less than a minute. Or am I looking at the wrong map? What the hell is all this? Worker productive time. Where's just worker count? Is there such a thing? Total worker time. In any event, you guys know what I mean. Those Karambas just absolutely shredded through Sebastian's base. He got a tiny bit more wood. And then the Viper just blew him out of the water when it came to food, gold, stone, and double the relic gold. Three conversions out of 307 is less than 1% playing zero role. A few buildings destroyed for both players, not the end of the world. Total kill count 274 by our Kamai, which is exactly what you expect when you're uh, fighting Zerglings. On the other hand, the Viper has killed 128, 73. <laughs> so Sebastian has killed 250 military. The Viper has killed 50 military. And that just goes to show you there's no one right way to win a game of Age of Empires. There's literally no one right way to do anything. You can kill five times the army count of your opponent. And remember, the Karambit only counts for twice the army supply, not five times. So he lost a whole bunch of Karambits. Still has 90 left going up to 119. Let's round that up to 120 for dramatic effect. But literally, in the last minute, the game just changed on its head. And Sebastian looks up. He's probably busy microing here, trying to move his trebs, trying to protect them from the Karambits. He looks down at his hotkey. He looks up at the screen and <laughs> what, the, what the hell happened? 
Thanos snapped his fingers, 50 disappear. And with those 50, his economy is now gutted. And he's not training 15 gold units. He's training cav archers, trebs. He's trying to get up a powerful army. And even though it was very mobile at first, now it's kind of stuck here defending these trebs because there's nothing else to defend them. And he wants to be active with them. Now, if you had not ungarrisoned these trebs, if you had maybe built a bit of a protective enclave for those trebs, you could leave them and take these cav archers and run them back here and try to stop the aggression, try to catch maybe some resource gathering out on the map. He's seen that there's a patch of gold here. And then his, pa I guess his gold miners were also kind of killed here. Is this full? No, these are full. Oh, no, one of them's, uh, two of them are at half. So Sebastian got about 800 gold out of here. And the Karambits are even killing whatever the hell this was. Looks like a, maybe a mining camp. And man, oh man, did the Viper gather all five infinity stones. And about a minute ago, he snapped his fingers and like puffs of dust, 50 villagers disappeared. And with those villagers, so disappeared the hopes of our Sebastian, our Kamai in red, which means that it is the Viper with this absolute insane swarming of a unit, swarming of a unit, unit that can swarm the hell out of their opponents, takes the W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.